Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. We, as we record this, this episode right now Mm -hmm. is, um, we just finished our conversation about transitions. Yes. Right? And... We had our uh, dear friend Tommy Metz III from All the Feelings come. We did a little crossover uh, a bit there. We talked about transition treats and dopamine redirection, and uh, and all of it as as sort of part of our of our the denouement of our games series. And what well, one of the things that we've heard from the community is that one of the one of the reactions to hard transitions is, yeah, but. I don't want to do that really hard thing. Right. <laughs> and, like you can give me all the treats so, in the world, but I still don't yeah. want to do it. <laughs> How do you handle, I don't want to smarty, yes. right? Like I don't want to do that thing that you're telling me I have to do. And so we thought we would just come together, just you and me and talk about uh, it, as a reminder, I think a reminder of what your brain is doing when you say, I don't want to. Yes. And possibly how we might get to the other side of that. Right, Coach? Absolutely. There's a way. There's a way out. I hope so. I sure hope so. Uh, But, so, before we dig into that, you know the drill. Head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list and we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or at Take Control ADHD everywhere. But to really connect with us, jump into the ADHD Discord community. It's super easy to jump into the general community chat channels. All you have to do is visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord. That is the universal public invitation screen. If you have a Discord account, you can just log right in and join the server. If you don't, it'll guide you through the process to sign up. And uh, then you'll be in. You can see all the public channels in the server. Now, if you're looking for a little bit extra, if this show has ever touched you, for example, if you're a longtime listener, you know what's up next. Head over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. That is where you can throw us a few bucks every month and you'll get access to all kinds of private memory stuff. There are definitely private member channels over in Discord. You get access to uh, monthly uh, other monthly activities, depending on the tier that you jump into. You can jump into happy hour, ADHD happy hour with me and Nikki. You can jump into ADHD coaching or coffee with Pete for, for coaching and tech chat. Uh, every month if you're at the platinum level like there's just a lot going on in the community and again learn all about that at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast I don't think we have any news no but I want to shout out to somebody because this oh, okay. so we got a really nice compliment and I want to share it with you and I haven't shared it with you yet so this will be like real time oh. like compliments to Pete and Nikki. Uh, <laughs> but yes, so I have a, a client who is a brand new member of GPS who, um, GPS, okay. right? We just closed the enrollment, but if you want to join us next time, mm-hmm. uh, definitely get onto the wait list. Join the waiting list. Yes. Yep. And part of being a GPS member is you get all of the Patreon benefits, right? As a, as a, Mm -hmm. as a Patreon. Um, and so you get all of that highest tier stuff. Well, this lovely woman, uh, was already at the Supreme or the not Supreme, um, platinum Platinum. level. And Mm -hmm. we told her like, you know, you're in GPS now, like you don't have to keep donating like you can you know we can just get you yeah, in we'll here. give you permissions yeah, for all like that you're, stuff yeah. you're here right and she said get out of patreon right and you know what she asked me she said well does that still support the podcast and i said well no because it's really separate i mean you know the the patreon uh-huh. community is supporting the podcast that's supporting me and pete yeah uh and she's like yeah. well no then i want to keep it the same because i want to support oh, you guys that's amazing yes I know. That's so nice. Wow. Her name is Dawn. And I just want to shout out to Dawn and say thank you for that, because I just thought that was very sweet. And um, we appreciate you and everybody else that that is part of this community that helps support us, you know, because that is what the Patreon is, is to support 
you and I to continue doing what we're doing and do these benefits well, and, all and everything else. all of this else. stuff, right? Like it all grew out of the podcast, right? right? It's so nice that there is still this sort of trunk of support yes. that started years, so many years ago. So thank you, Don, and everybody for supporting the show. Yes. This week's episode is brought to you by Text Expander, the best invisible tool in my tool chest. Here's how it works. If there's a piece of text that I type more than once, that's a signal that I need to add it to Text Expander. I keep my most used email messages, phrases, text messages, URLs, and more right in my Text Expander library. So once I put those into the library, they're snippets. A snippet can include text, links, images, code, account numbers, whatever you want. The trick is for each one of those snippets in my library, I assign a unique abbreviation. Then I expand it. I type the abbreviation to deploy that snippet or the content with just a few keystrokes on any device across any apps that I use. Just keep that abbreviation for the snippet I'm looking for, and boom, there it is. Text expanded. You can even get your whole team or family access to all the content they need to use every day. Organize it by department and group and make sure that your snippets are used consistently wherever they're needed. Now, we're talking about big transitions, and I don't know about you, but whenever I have a big transition, it reminds me how out of habit I can be at seasonal changes. It's back to school. I've got a senior, and you know what? There's so many forms, so many forms I have to fill out. They're all on the web, and that's why I count on text expander, all of our addresses, phone numbers, insurance numbers, all the stuff that I need to fill in for all the waivers for high school. It's right at my fingertips. I don't use this stuff every day, but here's my hint. Command on a Mac or control on a PC forward slash. That brings up a quick search menu. So you don't have to remember all of the abbreviations for all the snippets you have. Just command or control forward slash. And you can just search for whatever you need right in a little handy pop-up window. It is so simple, so perfect. It's chef's kiss perfect. So that's it. Text Expander, that easy. Available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, iPad. And for listeners of the ADHD podcast, you can get 20% off your first year of service. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Text Expander and you will be whisked over to our page on their site where you can get started Again, if you get started now, you'll save 20% off your subscription. The way we work is changing rapidly. Make work work the way your brain works by saying more in less time and with less effort using Text Expander. Our great thanks to the Text Expander team for sponsoring the ADHD podcast. I don't want to do anything. Nikki, I don't want I don't either. Sometimes like, I just don't want to. I just think going into my dining room and doing a puzzle sounds really good right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It does. I have a no. whole list of things I don't want to do. And what mm-hmm. happens is if there's one thing I don't want to do, it usually is in the way of four or five other things that I maybe would have done, but now I really don't want to do. Yes. They stack Motivation. up. Right? They're, they're compounding. Yeah. So what is going on with this little thing? Our dear friend, special friend of the show, emotional dysregulation. Yes. Yes, that's that's exactly what it is. So this is an impairment or inability to regulate your feelings, right? So it may cause an overreaction to small setbacks or challenges. And when you were talking, that's the, that's the first thing that came to my mind was that as soon as something doesn't go the way you expect it to, the day is over. It feels like it's over. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm hanging up my cat or my hat and my uh, trench coat and I'm going to go do my puzzle. (laughs) (laughs) Your hat and your trench coat? Are you a 1930s detective? Yes, I am. (laughs) All right. I'm a real gumshoe. And it's raining outside. Like I have this whole vision. Yeah. I'm like in New York City. Oh, very noir. Yeah. Uh And I, you know, it's stormy Uh and I'm hanging everything up and, you know, I've got, I've got cancer. The lights. I, I hear this. I I hear a lonely saxophone in the yes. distance. Yes, yeah. and it's all yeah. by candlelight. I have to do my puzzle with candlelight because you know the electricity yeah, sure. isn't working right now. Yeah, I have a whole thing in my head. Uh, <laughs> so 
<laughs> but Outstanding. it is really. Um, but yes, still. OK, going back to the the emotional dysregulation. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have you talk about the science because these words are too hard for me to pronounce. <laughs> You know, this, I, I think we've, uh, I, uh, this is sort of a, a universes collide kind of a thing, because a, a while ago, we did a, a show on the divorce podcast that I host, uh, How to Split a Toaster. And uh, we had a guest on who talked about the amygdala hijack. And this is some years ago. And at the same time, we started talking more and more about emotional di- dysregulation and the role that the amygdala serves in uh, in regulating um, emotions. The amygdala is the portion of the brain that handles the emotional reaction and decision making. And in times of stress, like in that case, divorce, uh, in our case, ADHD, the amygdala takes over things that it should not take over. Right. Yes. In the our, our, our sort of evolutionary response to, oh, my God, there's a saber toothed tiger on that rock right above me. That's when you want your amygdala to hijack everything and get you out of there. But right now, what is the greatest threat that we face? It's not a saber toothed tiger. No, it's opening I can an all email. But guarantee. Right. It's making yes, a phone call. It's opening an email. Yeah. Yes. So the amygdala is taking over services that need to remain clear and cogent. And that is emotional dysregulation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and it happens every day, right? So like the occasional tiger sighting doesn't happen very often. Mm-hmm. But with, like you said, with ADHD, this is happening all the time. Um Right. And with every email is another tiger. Right. Right. And when you think about ADHD, you know, you're you're already going to be prone to focus on what interests you. And so if there's a I don't want to do this for any reason, then you're going to avoid it at all costs. Right. So you're going to let that go and try to you know, you're going to focus your your attention on something else. Um, yeah. So, yeah, instead of thinking there, first, the ADHD brain is going straight to reacting to those very strong emotions and RSD, yes. right, can come yeah. into play. Rejection sensitivity, for sure. Right. And it's tricky. Tell me if you haven't heard this. You run into an I don't want to. You think, here's the thing that I don't want to do right now. I know it's the most important thing. I might have all of my faculties uh, uh, aware and clear that this is the most important thing, but I'm hijacked and I don't want to do this thing and I'm really resisting it. And so I am retargeting. I'm redirecting my energy on doing something less important, less urgent. And then I get that dopamine response that makes me feel like I've done a good thing when I haven't done a good thing. Right. I might have straightened up the the kitchen table and cleaned the kitchen and unloaded the dishes and done all the things that haven't gotten that contract signed that I really need to do. But I'm terrified of that haven't committed to that next project that I'm scared to actually get done because I don't know if I'm capable of doing it and imposter syndrome and all of those things. It doesn't matter because I just gave myself a treat for doing something that makes me feel as if I did a hard thing when I did not. And it's so temporary. It's such a temporary yeah. treat, right? Because it feels good at the yeah. moment, but then an hour later, you're stewing in your, you know, self-loathing of I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So now we're in yeah. this spiral right. of just feeling terrible and bad about ourselves. And, you know, then that treat that felt good in the moment doesn't even feel good anymore. It feels regretful. Yeah. Like I shouldn't have been doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy yes. cycle. Yeah. So that it's it's the the compounding fact yes. or the compounding effect of of the regret in a in an I don't want a situation. Uh, there is uh, there's a writer, a uh, guy by the name of Stephen Pressfield, who wrote uh, a book uh, that is very very close to me, important to me, called The War of Art. Oh, and I have that book. He has a really questionable. What? I have that book. A client gave it to me a oh. long long time ago. And I have like, have you read it? um, I have it in my library. I don't know. Do you read every book you have in your library? (laughs) Not everyone, but this one's really important. I know. Well, now that you say that, I need to find it. (laughs) He is, I, you know, we contain multitudes, and Steve Pressfield is a complicated guy. And he's an artist and a creative. And he has said on the record, I can't believe I'm repeating this, but he said on the record that he believes ADHD was created by the pharmaceutical. Uh, conglomerates. 
so there are things he doesn't know about. Obviously, but what yeah. he does know <laughs> ab- ab- about uh, is is this this thing, this thing that he is the amygdala hijack, right? But he calls it the resistance. He says mm-hmm. it is an energy field radiating from a work in potential. It is a repelling force. It's negative. Its aim is to shove us away, to distract us, to prevent us from doing our work. And in that, I read to prevent us from doing the thing we know needs to be done next, but are incapable of acting on it. I That book is like my slightly inebriated uncle kicking my butt into gear. Right. right. It is energizing and a little bit uh, abrasive and and it's just yells at me at just the right way. So when I really need to be yelled at in just the right way, sometimes I open a page of that book and I find it really, really um, energizing. Yes, yes. So I'm this, gonna find is, the book. this is the setup. Yeah, it's a good book. Yeah, it's a good book. Uh, this is the setup to this whole conversation around how we find ourselves in a space of emotional dysregulation. We're hijacked. We're hijacked. Well, we don't want to stay hijacked. I know that. <laughs> right. So we're going to basics. Right. Because we know this is what yeah. we're feeling and we don't want to stay here. Mm-hmm. So we have to do mm-hmm. something. Otherwise, we're going to stay here. So that's going to require us to think about what our next step is to get out. I have another visual of like being stuck mm-hmm. in mud. Right. Like you're stuck in mud. You've got your your again. This is a rainy, stormy day. And Mm -hmm. I'm in a lone saxophone in the distance. Yes. And I have, you know, big yellow rain boots on and I can't get Uh out of the mud like I'm stuck. So you got to think about like, what are your options? Right. Like, how do I get out of this mud? I have to lift my foot up and then I have to like take this forward step. And then I have to put the foot down and then I have to balance mm-hmm. myself and I got to get the second foot, the left foot, you know, up and then move it forward, get my balance. Like, yeah, it's it's a mm-hmm. step by step thing. It's these little steps. So how does it you as you're talking, it makes me think about just that that reminder of the difference, the nuanced difference between I can't versus I won't. Right. Right. Because. What you're what you're describing is I retain the ability to make choice about lifting my foot and putting it forward in in the next step in front of me. Yes. And the other voice is, oh, but because I'm hijacked, I won't do that. I won't pick up my foot to the next thing. And and I think that that means we have to step back and figure out what is the emotional experience? What is the thing that is limiting my capacity to believe in my ability to lift my foot and put it in front of me. Right. Because there is a difference between can't and won't, right? Because if you Mm -hmm. physically can't because you are like in quicksand or it's like, you know, you've lost your your movement of legs completely, then Mm -hmm. we have to think of, okay, what's the other option? I need help. I need to get help out so I can get out of this situation. How do I get help? So maybe it's screaming Mm -hmm. or yelling or like, you know, um, something that will get somebody's attention. Um, so if you physically can't do something, then again, we still have to look at the options that we have around that. What else can you do to get yourself out of here? Um, and, the the thing about if you think about, well, really, I just won't do it, then right. What you're saying is you have to confront those limiting beliefs. You have to confront what makes you think you can't do it because you can, you can do it. You can answer that email. You can make that phone call. There isn't f- anything physical that's saying that you can't actually go and do it. So again, right. we have to right. look at our options and what does what is one step forward look like? Um, and yes, I guess separate a little bit, right? Um, because your emotions are so high and it, it, you know, I, it, it's really difficult to, to have any space in between them. Um, yeah. So let's get out of the mud we're going to not use that story anymore. <laughs> well, and, yeah, because what's really, 
it's, it's just really great because what you've just described is limiting beliefs as a spectrum, which says like there are limiting beliefs, which is like, well, I can't do that. Or I, you know, I, but at some point, the limiting belief becomes a tantrum. And yeah. that's what I don't want it is. That's what I won't represents. It's an emotional internal tantrum right. that says I am putting up walls around what my next step would be, whether it's a step out of the mud or answering an email or picking up the phone to check my voicemail or whatever. Mm -hmm. I am in a tantrum state. Mm -hmm. And we have to recognize that me being in a tantrum state should not dictate a refusal to do the most important thing. That's what we have to kind of right. navigate between. Right. Right. And that may need some space around it. You know, it may need a little yeah. bit of time to uh, to let those feelings be. But then the next day, it's a new day. I get to start again, make a different choice. Right. Right. Because time does do something. It does help us in a lot of ways. And especially with right. emotions, it can help the heightened emotions start to calm down. It's just like the storms that James Ochoa talks about. Mm -hmm. You get through them. Exactly. You get through them. It's it's hard and crazy and scary when you're in it. But eventually you do get to the shore. And, and I think that that's what is happening here is to get yourself into a place where you can take that next action and feel like you can take that next action. And if you can't, like if you're in this like really depressive state, ask for help, ask for help. If you don't see any other yeah. way out, like you don't see it, that's where you really need to, to say, I need help right now. I need, I need something more than just coming from me. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. And, and it's totally okay. Totally okay. But the reality is when I am compromised is not the right time for me to try to litigate limiting beliefs in my own head and heart. No. Right? Because I'm compromised. Right. You're compromised. Right? But when I'm not compromised, the, the mantra of self-talk, which is if I waited to do everything that was on my list for when I felt like the space was right, oh. when I felt good. You're never going to do never it. Get anything done You're never going to do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and right? absolutely. This is, I, I read this article about ADHD scheduling and it, you know, the setup is always like this. Why do people with ADHD resent schedules? Well, it's because if you're a neurodiverse, um, then you tend to feel uh, more inclined to improvise with your time and to follow the, the, you know, the nature of whimsy. This was in, um, you know, chat at it today on their blog. And there is a lot to that. And that doesn't change the reality that we live in a culture that demands at least some adherence to time scheduling and responsibilities. Yes. That's just our reality. Right. Right. And so we have to figure out how to adapt. And that's where I think that, you know, mindset is important. You know, I think identifying those limiting beliefs are important and finding the strategies that that help you get into that next step, which is what we talk a lot about here, right? We talk about, mm -hmm. you know, using body doubles. We talk about Pomodoro methods. We talk about, you know, um, intentional planning. Like these are the things that will help you get out of that and, and get you into that first step. Uh, and so I think it's giving yourself enough time to let the emotions go down a little bit, but then saying, what can I do? Right. And, and I keep going back to when my daughter was in uh, elementary school and they were teaching growth mindset. And I still remember her saying, mom, you can do hard things. You can do hard things. Yeah. And that's almost oh like what God, you have so to lovely. keep repeating to yourself is I can do hard things. And I think your point to waiting for motivation or waiting for the right time, I think what I'm talking about is we're waiting for the emotions to 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 be a little bit less, but you can't wait mm -hmm. for the right time because you're absolutely right. It's never going to happen. That motivation, you're not going to all of a sudden be motivated to do a bunch of communication work when you don't want to do it. So then we have to figure out how can you make it a, a little bit more engaging, less hard, you know, and then you look at these strategies yeah. and the thing that you have to be careful of, and I'm going to, you know, uh, this doesn't happen often, but it does happen every once in a while where I'll be talking to somebody and we'll be, I, I'll be like going back and forth on these strategies. And I'm always hearing a, 
yeah, but, oh, I mm-hmm. tried that, but, uh, you know, oh, I, I don't think that's going to mm-hmm. work for me. You know, so there's always a a reason that they have somehow convinced themselves that this particular strategy doesn't work. And I've been doing this long enough to know that just because it didn't work for you maybe two or three or four years ago does not mean it's not going to work for you today. And so anything that you're questioning, I would really recommend that you keep trying again. And look at it from a different yeah. point of view. Can I can I just throw out a uh, a thing I haven't thought about until just right now? Yeah. Uh I I have this thing that I've been saying for decades that some that my tendency is to back pocket success, right? Like I have a thing that I feel really good about. Like let's just say I've written a couple of books that mm-hmm. I have never published. They're fiction books, they're just sitting in a drawer. And part of my hang up, my mental malfunction is that I back pocket success. I keep those books in my back pocket and I say, well, I've written the book, but I'll never know if it would have been successful because it's not published. It's like Schrodinger's book. So I can feel good about doing it, but also constantly punish myself for not finishing the job, right? Right. And I think there is something to that, speaking about my behavior writ large around trying new things around systems, when I find myself like really pushing back on a system, sometimes it's because the bigger question than why have I not done it is what if it works? What if it works and I find new ways to fail? What if I unlock something but uncover that the reason it hasn't worked for me before is not because it hasn't worked for me before, but because I'm a bad person? That's the limiting belief that's going on in my head, that I'm going to uncover some related malfunction that I am going to hate knowing about myself. So I better keep it a secret and keep the walls up. And for some reason, that's, you, you that's feel you're hurts. protecting yourself. Yeah. 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 And, and and it hurts so much to like say that crap out yeah, loud. Yeah. But I also know on some level, I am, like you said, I'm protecting myself from something that I believe is worse. Right. Right. That's that's like inner lunacy for me, right? Mm-hmm. Like why would why would one do that? But that is at the root when I'm compromised, that's at the root of my I don't want to because I have already written the script about why this doesn't work so that I don't have to face the monster on the other side. And not asking yourself what if it did work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't think I've ever put all of those words together before. Mm-hmm. For about myself, right. I'm not, I don't want to judge anybody yeah, else. No, but yeah. I just reflect that because maybe someone hears what I just said and says, "Oh God, I That's do that it. too." Yeah, I wonder if I'm alone. Right? Yeah. Oh, I don't think you are. That's going to be something to reflect. Right? On. For sure. For sure. For sure. And I think that that's you yeah. know that's the key is that when we're in the state, wh- what what do we need to dig deeper around? You know, that resistance, where do we need to like ask ourselves some hard questions? And, but also I think what you have said and added is really important too, is, but what if it does work? What if this is a good thing? Mm -hmm. What if I send this email and it actually, they're not mad at me. They're actually like saying they're sorry, right? Like there's a lot of different scenarios that could be more positive too. And, um, we tend to really forget those. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to, well, to get I'm a, by. I'm exhausted. I know. There's a lot of, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, a lot to think about here. Uh, but it's a good yeah. conversation. I'm glad that we have it because it is something yeah. that we Me all too. do and don't always catch ourselves doing it. Uh, we appreciate everybody for a number of different things. The first one is members who were looking forward to a live stream last week and we had to cancel. We're sorry. We hope this episode somehow makes up for it. Yes. Uh, and for everybody else, thank you so much. We so appreciate your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute, I'll still create a, a, a thread in the Show Talk channel to talk about this episode as it goes out. And uh, we appreciate your comments. Head over there and, and see what's up and, and share your thoughts. Hopefully uh, something connected on this one. Uh, it's, it's a big one. 
Huh. I'm sure I'm sure we'll come back Anyhow. to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can join us over there by becoming a supporting member over at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Thank you.